Hey guys, a couple things real quick. If there's any weird audio cuts in this audio, I am recording the audio while I am dog sitting again. So if there's random weird cuts or drops, I had to cut uh, dogs barking. So just a little FYI. Another thing is uh, a friend pointed this out to me and I don't want to be known as like the negative artist YouTuber because I've made, you know, a couple of rants and story times and stuff about the negative light in the artist community. And I say this as I have a critique. I don't think that these are negative opinions. This is a constructive criticism to artists who want to be vendors slash are vendors at conventions or just little, like, uh, booths if you have, like, a little town fair or a little art show or something. Because I've been doing a lot, a lot, a lot of research into this over the years. And because I want to do one myself. Granted, at the time of making this, I have not done yet one yet, but I have had friends who have done them. I have been a uh, advent, uh, advent. I have gone to cons and these things a lot, and I've done a lot of research in it. And there's a couple of critiques I feel I should point out to the people who want to do vending booths, who have vending booths. And uh, please understand, this is this is meant to be constructive criticism, but I'm still gonna be me, so. If it comes off as uh, rude or ranty, I do not intend for that to be. So let's get started. First of all, okay, um, this is like a really thing that bothers me and it's really unprofessional is when the the vendor's hall, the artist alley opens, okay, so it's the start of the thing and people aren't set up. This bothers me because artists and artist alley are allowed to go in two hours before everybody else in the general public get to go in to set up. And that really bothers me because in a professional st sense for normal vendors who aren't self-employed and are working with a company in the big exhibit hall or at other conventions where they're selling all the other stuff or even if you just... Uh, go to, like, um, Cody is a car guy, so we go to a lot of car shows. If a car vendor is not set up, fully set up by the time that the place is open, no one goes there because it looks very unprofessional. Because you are given extra time to set up. And I see a lot of artists who go to Artist Alley who wait until the exact moment that people are allowed in to set up their booths. Now, I know um, every convention is different. Every rule is different. Some say you can't set up the night before. Some say you have to do this and that. But I know that they always allow the artists. And if they have an artist table buddy, you can go in early to set up your booth. And granted, yeah, sometimes. Sometimes shit happens. I, I get that. But at AX this year, there was a multitude of artist alley booths that were not set up. They weren't even close to being set up. I'll give you a pass if you're, like, almost done, because I can tell you've been working, but I'll see people, like, they're not even, like, rushing to their table. They're just, like, taking their sweet-ass time, and they get there, and they have their thing, and they set up, and it's, like, a really elaborate booth, so it's, like, the artist alley's open, but you can tell this is going to take them at least an hour or two to set up when they had the time to set up. Now, granted, at Anime Expo, it's in L.A., and that's really, you know, that is a long drive and a long this and that, but they offer free shutter. They off awful. They offer free sh shuttle services. There's Uber. There's stuff you could have friends help you bring your shit in. Like to me, there is no excuse. As long as the con gives you time to set up early, if there are some cons that don't do that, or things that don't let you do that, then that's the only exception for you to not be set up when it's opened. So. That's a big one because to me it's just really unprofessional. So there's one. Um, another one is make sure you sell more than like one single thing. I was a little disappointed in the artist alley this year because I saw a lot of artists who usually do like prints and other random things doing just one thing this year. So they had like just a fuck ton of charms or just uh, a couple of enamel pins or... Um, Selling some originals. Originals, okay, you know what? Originals I'll give a small pass on if they're, like, decent originals. Like, if you have enough originals to hold up a whole booth. Because even though the booths aren't that big, like, you're gonna... 
I, you're spending like at least for Anime Expo now you're spending at least like five hundred dollars just to get the booth. So you're gonna wanna at least make like a thousand in profit. I mean, to be successful, that's that's just kind of basic economics. But if you don't even bring enough of your stuff to sell and like hopefully not make a thousand dollars, then I don't know why you're there. Maybe that's just me. But uh, sell more than one thing, like have a little bit of variety. You don't have to have a lot of variety because there were some people that had, I think, a little bit too much. I feel go for a good medium ground. Obviously, go for stuff that you actually enjoy making. There were a lot of artists that I could tell clearly did not understand the source material at all, and they were just doing it for money. And you could tell in the artists the stuff they were passionate about compared to, like, fan art and... A lot of their fan art wasn't selling, and even though we got there, when the con opened, there were people already taking down, like, things they weren't proud of, and I'm kind of like, why would you do this? Why would you go to a con where you're selling your work and put up things you're not proud of? Like, it, it just doesn't make sense to me. So there's one. Um... Another one is uh, try doing bundles. People like bundles. And um, as I explained uh, in a couple videos past, uh, I recently bought a button maker and that was a pretty expensive investment for me. But, 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 the actual supplies in the button maker make it so that if I sell my buttons for one buck a button, I'm already making a lot of profit. And I feel like for a tiny pin, a dollar is more than fair. That's what I would spend. Oh, oh, bump the mic. Sorry. Is what I would spend going to like a Hot Topic or a convention or something if I saw like a tiny little button. Be like, okay, buck is fair. Yeah, it's fair. And you're already making a profit there. So you could offer bundles or packages. Then people are ten a lot um, more often inclined to buy more things. So you'll actually end up making more money. So, like, a buddy of mine, she went to AX all four days, and she got this really nice button pack where it was, like, a really, really big, like, two, three-inch button with, like, three or four small buttons, and the whole thing was $5. And she asked me, she's like, this was a good deal, it's not like a good deal, and I'm like, yeah, that's definitely a good deal, because probably you paid for, like, the big button, because I'm assuming that one was pretty expensive, like, finger quote expensive, they're not that expensive to make, but, like, you know what I'm saying. You know, and so then they threw in a couple other buttons, so, you know, you feel like you got a little bit of extra in there. Because, again, if you're even selling them for a buck a button, you're already making a profit. So, there's that. Um, don't oversell your stuff. The only exception to this, in my mind, is if you have a name to go behind it. And even then, like, I'm never comfortable with that stuff. So, even, you know... If and when, hopefully, hopefully, you know, when, um, I make it, like, big and stuff, I will never have my prints, unless you're buying, like, a giant poster or something, because that would make sense. I would never have my prints be really expensive, because I like to follow the rule of, would you buy this? Because there's a lot of artist people that I've talked to where everyone wants to make money. Artists want to make money. You know, it's always, you, you want to make money. You don't want to undersell. You don't want to get ripped off. But they'll say stuff like, oh, well, I should be selling. P people have told me I should sell this for $100. And so then I ask them, I'm like, so would you buy that for $100? And they'd be like, well, no. But other people say they'd buy it. And I'm like, well, you yourself will not buy it. So how are other people supposed to buy it? That's, that's, that's my mentality behind it. If um, I'm doing mini prints, like really tiny, like five by sixes or something, because I saw those too, I would probably, it depends on what, okay, it depends, yes, it, you got to put into account, you know, where you got it printed, if they're like limited editions, if they're nice prints, like if they have uh, like gold leaf or like that, like that, uh, uh, the metallic-y ones or like what's big right now, the, the metallic film over them, then okay, you know, you can add like a dollar or two for that, because again... As bad as it is to say, as an artist, I know how much this shit costs. I don't want to say because then people might be turned away from it. But it's usually in, like, you got to buy it in, like, orders of 30 or 500 or something. It's the same with pins. It's like, when you see pins and buttons and little charms go for, like, $5, 6 you're like, oh, I want to spend 5 6 It's like, well, the artist had to spend probably, like, a good few hundred dollars getting these made because they have minimum caps because... You know, the company making the charms has to make money too. 
So that's something you need to think about, but there are a lot of people who try to overcharge. Like, um, you'll see people who make, like, finger quote charms, and you could tell they just printed it off at home, and they went to, like, a Kinko's, or they have a lamination machine, and they just laminated it, and I'm kind of like, okay, for a bookmark, I'm okay with that, because they're bookmarks or something, like, you don't have to get those made. But when you're claiming them as charms and keychains and stuff, I'm like, that's going to fall apart when it goes on someone's bag. If you sold it for like $2, even then that's a maybe, but I'd see people selling it for like $8, $9 when I'm like, uh, eh, I can get a nicely made enamel pen just that's nicely made. I always like quality over quantity. And that's another thing is obviously um, you need to be willing to invest in your booth. That's another really big critique is there's lots of people who won't do that. They'll pretty much be like, I'm only spending $100 on my own supplies, like like your merch and stuff. And then they're sold out and they have nothing for the rest of the con. So another good one is, you know, be prepared. Actually, like I said, you want to hope to make at least double, like, you want to make what you made back plus like that in profit. That's usually what you want to go for for a successful booth slash table slash like anything in the industry. But if you don't have a backup. I know lots of artists would run out of certain types of prints and they would be like massively on Twitter like, oh shit, I need to find a print shop, like blah, 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 blah. And in my mind, I'm like, that's also stuff you should research ahead of time. Now, if it's your first con, then I'll give you a little grace period, but I've seen people who've been to AX and Artist Alleys that do it all the time. Like every year they're there and every year they're unprepared. And I'm kind of like, okay, you know what? First year I let you pass. Second year, you should have known better. Third year you're an idiot. Like, come on. That's, 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 I know calling someone an idiot is not a good part of constructive criticism, but I mean, that's to me, you're not being professional. You're not taking enough time to care to be like that. Or you have no faith that your thing's going to sell. You should have faith that your work is going to sell or else why waste the money to get a booth? Cause that was another thing. Um, I was re listening to a podcast recently. I know sounds like a tangent, but it has to do with this cause it had to do with AX and they brought up the artist alley and they brought up how there were a lot of people who had booths where their art quality was not really professional and they made, they had like no people around them at all. They made like no sales and they were saying how, you know, like they don't want to be mean, but if you don't even have faith in yourself, you probably shouldn't do this. That's why I always suggest open an online store first. And even if you don't have a big following, like I'm at the time of recording this, I'm at 12,000 subscribers. That is, that, that is huge for me. But in the retrospect of the internet, that is nothing. I mean, just look at, at any of the big YouTubers out there. And that's just YouTube. You know, look at big artists out there. You'll see their Twitters have like 5,000 things on Twitter. Like, 4,000, 8,000, 10,000 on their art websites, that kind of stuff. And, you know, that adds into it. That is faith. But there are also a lot of great artists out there who aren't that popular. They don't have that many subscribers. They don't have that many watchers. But their art quality is professional and shows it. So they go to these conventions. They have their stuff sold. They gain new watchers that way. Heck, there's people who literally make a living who are artists who make their entire year's income just doing the con circuit for a single summer. I'm not saying doing just AX. I mean doing the con circuit because the U.S. has like a big con circuit around the summertime. So, yeah, it's a lot of travel. But if done right, your entire income for an entire year could be done in three months. And, again, that's going to take, like, a lot of money. Again, you have to invest in yourself. It's that whole you have to have money to make money. You have to spend money to make money thing because it's true. If you're not in it, even like a decent place to be able to spend money on your own stuff, that's why I've been waiting so long as I've been slowly putting aside stuff and slowly collecting things and slowly getting things to be able to do merch and do original things because I got bills to pay. I got to eat. You know, I got to feed my chinchillas. People don't know I have two chinchillas. But it's like, to me, those are more important than getting a booth. I want a booth, and I, I do, but it's like, can I really afford to drop maybe a thousand dollars on merch for an entire summer of con stuff? No. 
right now I am not in that financially good of a place to be like, yeah, here's a thousand dollars. If it doesn't sell, whatever, I'll just have it on my like online store when I have an online store up. That's like an original, you know, physical online store like Etsy and stuff. It's like that'll be a little different. But even then, you're not even you're not even guaranteed that you're going to be selling stuff constantly. So that's just a little little uh, warning. I'm not saying don't don't jump in because I do believe you should jump in, but like dip your toe in first, feel the water. You know, I'm not saying be like you know super nervous and just wait to get acclimated, but you want to at least dip your toe in. You want to know if the water's boiling fucking hot or ice fucking cold before you jump on in. So that's it's an analogy for me. Um, another one is please, please, please have business cards. I know a lot of people don't like getting business cards made, even though, again, they don't really cost that much money. You can get, like, 2,000-something business cards that are nice quality for, like, 30 bucks. So, and and don't ask people to buy business cards. There were a couple of people who were trying to sell their business cards, and I'm like, a business card is something you kind of, you know, you just they're supposed to be free, so you're giving people your information so you could get business in the future. I mean, that's why they're there. It's got your information on it. It's not a mini print. I mean, if you want to do mini prints like business cards, I mean, I guess you could, but that would be like, you'd have to do like a bundle to even worth it. I wouldn't buy a business card size print unless it was like an original ACO or something. And even then it'd have to be something I liked. But then again, that's me. I don't know. Maybe I'm weird. But yeah, get business cards. Uh, Have your business cards be very clear. Don't have it be too cluttered. Um, have it, let it have your information on it too. Like my buddy, uh, went and she got more business cards than I did at AX. And there were some that just had a picture on it. There was, there was no information. Again, it was kind of like a print. And I was like, am I supposed to know who this artist is? Cause the picture's cute, but like, there is no way I know where this person is. I have no idea what their social medias are. I have no idea what their email is. I don't even know their name. Cause it was like such a tiny little business card. And my buddy was even saying that, yeah, like, yeah, she agreed with me. That was kind of BS. You shouldn't do that. So, you know, have it. um, That's another reason why you probably want to have the same username or like really, really similar usernames across all the platforms. At the time of making this, I'm like going to hope, hopefully I can get Twisted Disaster for my like YouTube. But I'm like Twisted Disaster on almost every platform except for YouTube where I'm Twisted Disaster's Arts. That's also like my Facebook and on Twitter, where it's Twisted Disaster, but the E's are threes, because some asshole took Twisted Disaster, because, you know, I'm an edgelord, and I need that name. But it's like, you want to try to have as close to a username or your name as possible, if, and if you don't want your social medias, have a business email, some form of contact, because if not, then there's, like, no point, and if they don't know where to follow you, then again, why are you at a convention selling your stuff? I just, I don't know, maybe that's, maybe that's me. Um... Another one is make sure you bring cash. This is going to be a long video. Oh my God. Bring cash. Okay. Bring cash because there's lots of artists who are like, well, I'm going to make all this money, but then people are going to show up and they're going to ask you to break it and you're not going to have cash. And then they're going to go somewhere else and probably forget you exist because that happens when the artist alley is as huge as it is, is they'll be like, oh, you don't have change. Okay. I'm going to go. Unless they're like, they really, really want something. You're probably not going to see them again. They'll probably go to someone who has cash. I would say... Get a hundred dollars cash and like uh, fives and ones and like change actual like change change. If you if you're like using change, a lot of people don't use like coins. So if you're not using coins, don't do it. But like fives and ones, because the majority of your sales are not actually going to be from print. It's going to be from little knickknacky things that people have just spare money for. Because that's usually what kids spend on. Yes, there are professionals who buy artists and buy prints. But a lot of the times at these conventions, there are little kids, it's like, oh, kid's first convention, you know, and their mommy or daddy gave them, like, $5. They're not going to be able to get a $20 print. So, like, have buttons, have pins, have knick-knacky things, that kind of thing. And those do really, really well. That's why I, I, I'm i saying, like, you should have at least some of those, but don't make, like, your whole booth that unless you have, like, a really, really big variety. But even then, like, it has to be a very vast variety in my mind. Um, yeah, so bring money, because that's another one, like, people don't want to, they don't want to bring money, because they're like, oh, I'm supposed to be making money, why, I mean, it's just, it's because people, people are stupid, okay, people don't bring exact change. I know I didn't, I had, like, $100 in 20s, so I needed change, 
and I had a couple artists who I wanted to get stuff from, and they didn't have any, and they told me to go look, and I, like, honestly, I kind of forgot about them. I felt bad, but I forgot, because the artist tally was huge. So, bring, bring, um, spare money, get, like, a cash box or something. That's another one, um, and I'm getting close to the end, which is really, which is good, um, it's, it's 20 minutes, and people seem to like my videos, and I ramble, so... Only do commissions if you have the time to do so. This is really big. Because I noticed not as many people were doing commissions this year. When my first year at AX, like, every artist was doing commissions. Um, and I think what was happening was there was a lot of things going on. A lot of artists scamming people and not getting their stuff done. Or, st or doing it so fast that it wasn't even, like, the example in which it caused people to be, like, disappointed and kind of want refunds, and then they didn't get refunds because they still did work. So if you want to do commissions, all right, you got to keep in mind, one, how long is the con? Like, for real. Uh, if your con is only, like, a day, don't offer commissions. It, I just don't see that point. If your con is, like, AX where it's four days and you want to do commissions, get that shit done when you go to your hotel room or you go back home. Because, like, I get it. You know, you want your work day to be done. You don't want to think about it anymore. You want to just chill for the rest of the day. Because it is hard. It is it is hard manning a booth. It is stressful and, you know, and uh, makes you anxious and stuff. And you want to chill. But if you don't get all of your commissions done the day of the con, or the day you go back, then people are going to ask. You're going to get people... Because as bad as it is, I was one of those people, and I don't even like being a nag. But I would go all four days, like, with my buddies, and we would tell them, like, okay, if you don't, if you want to do it later, you can do it later. I'm going to be here all four days. And so I'd go the next day, and they'd be like, oh, it's not done yet. And I'm like, okay, go the day after. It's still not done. And I'm kind of like, okay. And then I'd get on, like, the fourth day, and honestly, only a small handful was even worth it. And my buddy had been uh, screwed over because, like, some people just never did them. They never ever did them. I got away with money. And so it's like, if you're not willing to take the work back with you and get them done in your room or wherever you're staying, then you probably shouldn't have opened for them and you probably shouldn't have taken them. Or you should have capped off when you realized you were overwhelmed. Because I've seen people do that too, where they'll be like, okay, I only have like four or five commission slots for the entire day because they want to have nice quality commissions. They want to get it done quickly. And people would bitch and moan, but I'm like, no, that's more mature to cut yourself off before you get too overwhelmed. Because when you get too overwhelmed, what do most people want to do? You don't want to end up doing it. So, um, hopefully, this wasn't too negative. I wasn't trying to have this be negative again. This was this was my uh, me just trying to give thoughts out there for things that uh, you should do if you want to sell art like that and keep at least or keep it in mind. Because if again you want to do this kind of stuff you should treat it like a profession because a lot of people do. If you're just doing this for shits and giggles and because it's fun for you, then fine. But if people think you're not professional, don't get mad at them because you're not you're not acting like a professional. You're not acting like this is your job. And granted, yes, for some artists, it's not. Some artists, they just do this for fun, for some quick cash. Good for them. But if you want to be treated like a professional, you need to show that you are professional. Have good work ethic, have good product, have good this and that, you know, have, and even if you're like antisocial, you know, at least try to try talking to people. I know it's hard, but try talking to people, try to communicate. People want to get to know their artist, especially if they're a fan. I know because that's what I would do when I would find a fan, an artist that I loved for years is going to be there. I want to talk to them and want to like meet them. I know we're not going to be bosom buddies or become friends suddenly, but I'd like to at least kind of like, you know, see the person behind the art, so, mm. I don't know, maybe I'm just weird, anyway, I hope this helped you guys, it's another long e-video, but I heard some people say they really like when I do these, because they like listening to me while they work, which makes me happy, because I do the same thing, not to my own videos, but to other people's videos, so, I'm gonna end it here, and as always, guys, I will see you next time, bye!